So lots of times when you're writing shell scripts, you just kind of can point at a directory or a group of files and filter through them and just process through them if you need to process files with your shell scripts. Thing is, sometimes you want to select certain files and not the others. Well, today we're going to be looking at selecting multiple files with your shell script and then processing through them. Now, my favorite way of doing this is right in the shell without any GUI interface uh, using FZF. And most of the time, this is a great option. It allows you to quickly search and filter through files. You can multi-select. But the thing is, there are certain scenarios where you may want more than just a text interface. Most of the time, I recommend a text interface. But the example I've come up with today is we're going to grab set of images and we're going to process through them and we're going to convert them from color to desaturated or a black and white and move them to a new folder. And we don't want to just do a whole directory, we want to select the ones we want. And for that, sometimes it's nice to have a GUI interface so you can see the thumbnails you pick. Now, I have four or five scripts I wrote. We're going to go over today. I'm going to show you them running, quickly look at how they work, but then in the future videos over the next coming weeks, we're going to look at each script one by one, look at the pros and cons and exactly how they work. So let's jump in and have a look at this. Okay, here we are first off, gitlab.com forward slash metalx1000. There'll be links on my webpage, but there I have a project called bash multi-file select. And in there, we'll have all the shell scripts that we're going to be looking at today that I've created. And for getting, getting to work is once you go into one of them, you just have to change the variables for the input and output folders that you want to work with. Uh, but that's where you can get all the scripts we're looking at today. And let's go ahead and jump right in. Here I am in my shell. I'm in that project, clone from GitLab. And over here on the right is my file manager. On the right side, I have a split screen here. And I have the folder that we're starting with, which has color images. And when we process the ones we select, they're going to show up in this directory over here in a desaturated uh, black and white. So let's look at my first and in for most things, I think the best option, which is FCF fuzzy finder. So my script here files dot, uh, files underscore FCF, it will point to that directory, list out all the files. It's listing out the full path name. You could uh, you know, write more for the script to just show the file name, uh, but I wanted uh, to keep the script as short as possible for this demonstration. Now, if you're not familiar with SCF, it's pretty simple. If we want to multi-select, I, I can just select one. I go up to the one I want, I hit enter, and it processes it. So now I have a black and white copy of that image. Uh, if I wanted to select more though, my script is set up so I can tab, I can hit tab, and you can see the little arrows. If I want to remove one, I can remove it. Down at the bottom, it tells me how many photos or files there are, how many we're displaying, and how many I have selected. I could hit enter, and it will start processing through those, and I can open those up and start just looking at all of them. So there we go. So we're doing good so far. One of the big benefits of FZF is that it's a fuzzy finder. Now, very simple example here. I only have so many files, but you can have lots of files and you can simply search them. But in this case, let's say I want to select the HDR files. I can type in HD, oops, HDR, and it shows them all. And I'm sure there's a shortcut key to select all once you do that, but it's also real quick just to hold down tab till they're all selected. I'll hit enter, and now it's converting all those to a gray scale over here. Okay. Now that we've looked at FCF, let's look at another option. I'm going to delete out this all the files in this directory. I'm going to now do my Zenity option. Zenity is great if you want simple GUI dialog boxes. For the most part, I'm going to tell you avoid GUIs, right? Because it's just easier to use the shell. It's quick to use shell. You can SSH in, don't have to worry about forwarding and all that stuff. It's just cleaner. It'll work on more systems. But maybe you want a GUI, right? So here it is. It opens it up. I can select the ones I want. I can control select. I can shift select what I want. And then when I hit OK, it will process through them. It doesn't have that nice fuzzy finding search feature. So if you had a lot of files, all named different things, it's a lot harder to find the ones you're looking for. You can't just type and select them real quick. But some people, for some reason, find this more comfortable than the same list in the shell. Um, now, the problem with both these options is you don't see the thumbnails of the images you're selecting. I really don't know what images I'm selecting because I know them by name. Um, and I'm pretty sure if anyone knows if Xenity has an option for thumbnails, please let me know. I've looked through here and I've quickly Googled it and didn't come across anything. But I'll hit cancel here, click OK, whatever. Um, let's look at an option where we do have thumbnails, a few options. Uh, so let me clear this out. 
The next one we have is going to be called uh, files thumbnails. So files thumbnails. I'm going to cat that out just so you know. This must be installed. It's called SXIV. It's in your repositories. I first learned about this program watching a video by Luke Smith. And if I run my files that thumbnails, what it's going to do is it's going to direct to the directory, this directory over here with my original photos, and that SXIV or VI, whatever the program was, it's just an image viewer. So it's going to open up right like this. I can make it full screen if I want, but I can see the thumbnails and I can move around. I can hit enter to go into one. I can hit spacebar to go to the next. I can enter to go out of that. But the thing is, what it lets also lets you do is I can press M and you can see when I press M, it puts a little square in the bottom corner of the thumbnail. I can also hit M on an image to remove it. If I'm in the full screen mode and I hit M, you can look down here. It's kind of small, but in the bottom right, see my mouse cursor here, the little arrow, there's an asterisk there. That means this image is selected. Hit M again, it unselects it. And as I'm going through the photos, uh, so if I was to hit space here, this one, space here, you can see that one's already selected. And again, enter to get out of that. Now, when I kill this program, it's going to pass all the selected ones back to my script. So I'll close out of this program and it starts processing all the ones that I checked. It's great. It's not spectacular because it works great if you're familiar with it. But if you're not familiar with it, who would think to press M2? I'm assuming M stands for mark, to mark an image. That's kind of weird. And then it doesn't have an OK select button because it's an image viewer, but it will pipe them back out or dump them back out to your script when you exit. So if you're writing a script for yourself or a worker who you can train, it's a good option, but it's not a good option just send out to somebody who's like just the regular Joe out there. So that, that's the biggest drawback to that option, in my opinion. Uh, but it does work. And you, again, these are options that are simple options without having to design a full interface for your images. Now let's look at drag and drop options. So if you had a script or any program, you know, you can be like blah, 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 whatever the name of the program is. And you can be like file, file two or one, file two, and you can pass it multiple files. Well, the thing is you can drag and drop and that's kind of what it does. So uh, if you were to select some images and drag and drop them to the shell, it just drops them in there. Uh, you would think that these quotation marks, these, these single quotes, these apostrophes would help divide it up, um, but it doesn't actually really work very well that way. But we are going to look at two options where you can drag and drop from pretty much any file manager into your script. And I have two of them, but I'm actually going to start with the first one I called drop two. So files drop to, I'm going to hit enter and he says no such. So, cause I didn't pass it anything. This particular one, before you run the script, you select the images you want. So I'll select this one and this one and this one, and I'll drag them here. And when I hit enter, where am I, did I move out of my directory? Oh, I did drop to, okay, sorry. File, you gotta actually type in the proper name of the, of the script. Now I can drag and drop before I run my script, drop them in as arguments, right? And then when I hit enter, it's going to process through each one. That's nice. If the person knows to drag and drop, not, and you can type them out too, but it's easier to drag and drop. And I'm drag and dropping the full directory. Now there is a, another option uh, where we actually use the read command inside the script. So if I go to my files, drag, drop, the first one without the two at the end, when I hit enter, it actually says, please drag and drop drag files, drag and drag, drag and drop. I'll, I'll fix that typo. Uh, but now I can drag and drop files. And when I hit enter, it processes through them. It's actually processing through the same ones because I selected the same ones. But if I select another one, I can run this as well. And the thing is, after you drag it, you have to click into the shell and then hit enter. Uh, so it'd be nice if you can get it to run without that. I did see a script that does kind of do that, that someone else wrote but it was very complicated. I wanted my script to be uh, simple uh, as far as looking at the code. So you have to drag and drop, click in the shell and then hit enter. So a big drawback, that's one of the biggest drawbacks. This, the, the big, one of the biggest drawbacks to this is that you have to open up a file manager, go to the directory, select the images, start up the script, then drag over there. So uh, a good option would probably be to, in your script, have it open up the directory in the default file browser. That, that'd be probably the quickest option. Um, I didn't do that for demonstration purposes. And also you can have a combination of the two. So my drag and drop and my drag and drop two, you can have it where it checks 
if arguments were passed and if they were files. And if they weren't, then ask people to drag and drop to it. So that's another option. And you can actually make combinations of all of these if something was passed to the shell, not if, if you have Zenity available and there's a GUI available, run it. If not, then use FCF. But they all, so far, all of these for images have had not the best options. The first two options are best for most files, but if you're working something images or maybe even videos with thumbnails, you want some sort of GUI interface where you can see a thumbnail. And these are the options I've come up with, the, the scenarios I've come up with without having to actually go into another programming language and write a whole GUI interface. Now, if you have knowledge of a better option to very simply create, you know, view thumbnails and pass them to your script, let me know. If you're interested more on how these work and we can look at some of the pros and cons more uh, in the code writing, wait for my future videos over the next couple of weeks. I will go over each one of these scripts one at a time. And, and they're all pretty short. So like if I cat out my um, uh, files, fuzzy finder one, uh, look, the top is just, you know, my header here. The code is just this here. It's not very long, uh, basically input folder. Oh, also I purposely put spaces in the file names and the folder here. Uh, because these scripts would actually be easier if you didn't have to worry about spaces and file names. But since some people do put folders and files with spaces, I wanted to take that into account. So I purposely made uh, folders with spaces in them, which I would normally try to avoid doing. Uh, but that's it. It's getting a directory for input and output, creating a directory, and then uh, looping through the images, passing the FCF, and then processing them. Uh, it's breaking. Oh, I'm, I'm going over the script. That's for a future video. Thanks for watching. Uh, my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.